This is the story of one man's journey to becoming a legend. A legend who dragged his family to the middle of the country on the hottest day of the year. A legend who insisted his family miss their bedtimes so they could cheer for him at the end of yet another race. A legend who lasted longer on the race course than almost anyone else. A legend who... Uh, wait, what's that? The point isn't to take as long as possible? The fastest person wins the race? So then, what's so special about this guy? <gasps> ah, because he wrote the script and is paying the bills. Got it. Okay, where was I? Oh, yeah. A legend who made everyone participate in this post-race video against their wills. He is Iron Man. I'm not the Iron Man. I am an Iron Man, though. Yes. Um. If you thought his first marathon ever was long, you go get me a beer! <laughs> if you thought his Chicago Marathon was long... Just get emotional, because you want to cry, which makes me... Like, wheeze and not be able to leave. If you thought his first Surf City Marathon was long... If you thought his New York City Marathon was long... Who are you going to call? If you thought his first Long Beach Marathon was long... You're on video! If you thought his first L.A. marathon was long. Well, yeah, actually, that one was really long. Forget that. This ended up being his second longest marathon time ever. Other than his first L.A. marathon, the only thing longer than his Iron Man is this video itself. Buckle up, folks. Kevin's about to tell one of his long, meandering stories. You guys, I interviewed Kevin for an hour and 45 minutes. And why did we stop at that point? Because the camera died. Every time Kevin has told the story, it's been at least an hour and 45 minutes, at least in my mind. Maybe the, the, the rest of the listeners' minds too. He's long-winded. When I signed up for the Oceanside Half Ironman in 2020, that was gonna be my first time back doing a, an Ironman type race, a longer distance uh, in about five years. And it was going to be, I do that one in 2020. I was gonna do another one like that in 2021. And then sometime in 2022, before I turned 40, it was gonna be, I'm gonna do my first full Ironman. So by the time that race came along, and now I have to adhere to these rules of, you have to go in this direction, you have to go this far, you have to have no headphones. and. By the time I got to the run, I was not having fun. Comes back around at one of the turnarounds at some point. I was like, bored is not the right word, but I was just over it. And I told Aaron at mile six on the run that I'm not doing any more races like this. And Kevin is climbing up this hill and he looks at me and he's like, never again. It's late for me. You're done? <laughs> you say that now. Fun. You say that now. Yeah, you're recording. It's not fun. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, man. Kevin finishes the race. He's got a big smile on his face, although apparently he didn't enjoy it that much, but he's always happy to finish. So we went to the Iron Man store after that and we bought a bunch of stuff from Oceanside. And it's like, this is the last time I'm doing one of these races. Clearly, it's not the last time I did one of those races. A few days later, five days later maybe, Kevin sits me down for a serious talk. We never need to have serious talks. I'm always gonna wonder if I could have done it. I'm always gonna wonder what if, and maybe I'll do one in a few years, but I'll just be a few years older, you know, body starts breaking down eventually, it's gonna be that much harder. Did you ever get the I told you so's? Uh, maybe, maybe now is the time I'm gonna get them? No. No, okay. I don't think you have that kind of wife. No, I don't. Aaron never said I told you so. But the first conversation, when I explained it to Aaron, it was a lot of her guessing what I was about to say, her guessing correctly, me saying, hey, hon, I, I want to talk. Um, and I'm like, you want to do another half Iron Man? And he goes, well. 
<laughs> and I'm like, a full Iron Man? You want to do full Iron Man? You, you want to do a full Iron Man? Of course. You want to do a full Iron Man? Of course. I knew it. I, okay. I told you. I told you you weren't done. Ah! Okay. I, you might not have said I told you so, but you were accurately guessing with a lot of like, I knew you weren't done. And you weren't mad about it. You just knew I wasn't done. A lot of people ask me, why Des Moines? A lot of people would say, you're crazy to do Des Moines. And they would be right. Uh, I didn't pick Des Moines because it's a destination we've always wanted to visit. Yeah, yeah exactly. It was like, why Des Moines? I'm not gonna go to, I would never go to some state like that. Why didn't we? Uh, it's Des Moines. I don't like, honestly, I won't, I won't, I wouldn't. I never in my life you would see me in Iowa, ever. What did you think when you heard it was going to be in Des Moines? I mean, idiots out walking around is what Iowa stands for, and that's pretty much what Kevin did. <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> the fact was, I could do it in the summer when Erin's calendar was free as a, as a teacher. She only has so much time off, and obviously the kids could be out of school. They could come see me. It helped that Erin's best friend, Morgan, lives in Des Moines and they haven't seen each other in a long time, so what a great time to visit, huh? Hey, we're gonna be there in, in about six months. Uh, that, I think that was the extra tip that got Aaron 100% on board. Why, you've uh, seen me do plenty of races. Why, why this one? Why, why well, are you going half the way across the country? I mean, one and done, and, and nobody that I know of has ever, ever done one, so. Well, it wasn't just another race. It was a full Ironman. It was a full Ironman. Nobody's ever done that. So, yeah, and I, you know, you want to be there, support your family. My parents said they're coming out and good Lord, everyone knows they've, they've seen me do plenty of races. They were there in Chicago, in New York, when I did my first sub four hours in Carlsbad. They've seen me race a billion times. I did not expect them to come out to uh, Des Moines just because who's, who's going to Des Moines? It's like, I guess we're going. <laughs> of course we would go. And I tell you what, I'm glad I didn't go because the spectators seemed like that was a very long day. And I remember thinking, oh, I'm glad I didn't go to this. Also, Laura and Johnny came out to both my Oceanside races. So they, I mean, they've they've done their, their duty in that sense, right? And it's just us in the heat following you around. And we're, we're sitting around a lot. We're sitting around a lot, you know? Uh, we didn't go to Des Moines because it's far and there's nothing else to do there. Never. Is this heaven? It's Iowa. Ghostbusters. Keep, feel the dreams. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Hey, is this heaven? No. It's Iowa. How would you not want to go to Iowa? No, no, I'll never go there. I'll never go there. Well, I thought, why would anyone willingly go to Des Moines? I called my sister Colleen, who was in the Chicago area, about a five hour drive from Des Moines. Hey, are you guys around for the few days after the race so we can come out and see you guys on our way to Jersey Shore to visit uh, other family? And she said, uh, Hey, it's close for us or closer. So, you know, I suppose we could like, you know, make a trip of it. Wow, okay, that's awesome. I wasn't expecting that, but that's great. Thank you. No, when I heard it was in Des Moines, I was like, all right, that's a good call. It's gonna be flat. The weather won't be bad. Mm -hmm. um, and we can go watch. Were you excited about that last part? Or were you like, oh, shit, now we have to go watch? <laughs> I plead the fifth. <laughs> and then my uncle Rob texts me and says, hey, are you doing this Iron Man? I'm in, I'm gonna be there. He booked a hotel before we did. Like I, I was, I was dumbfounded. I'm like, dude, that's, that's great. Rob and I, you know, did a, a full marathon together. Got two or three days after grandpa died in 2013. It's gonna be great having him there cheer me on and everything. And then, uh, yeah, my twin sister, Katie, she's pregnant. She's, she's not about to get on a plane. I wouldn't expect her to. Hey, I'm gonna come, you know, risk getting sick on a plane during a pandemic just to see you race yet again. You know what? Uh, really? I don't have time for this. <laughs> what are you talking about? I've been about? a little busy. Yeah? A little busy. So his goal, I guess, was to do an Ironman before he turned 40. Yeah. Your goal is to make a baby. My goal is a little different. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, well. Actually, she just made an Iron Man. Come on, let's go. <laughs> oh, good one, good one. So, Terrence. Now you're on video here. Oh, I was hoping that. So, what is your thoughts about Kevin doing a full Iron Man? Good for him. Yeah? Good for him. I get it. I've done a lot of races. I don't expect people to show up anymore. Uh, but it was very cool having the people who did show up, show up. It worked out to be a great vacation. I'm always coming up with these great ideas for the family. And if you don't do a race vacation, are you really doing a, a race anyway? I mean, add a, add a race into any vacation you do, right? We're going to the beach house in Newport. Add a race. You've done that already. I did do that. And you love the idea so much, you said, "Hun, on our way to visit family on the East Coast this summer, why don't you do a race beforehand? That's a great idea. The biggest race you'll ever do. And I said, Aaron, if, if you're serious about it, I'll do it. I could not have gone down this journey if it wasn't for the help of my wife and my kids, all their support along the way and everything. And William's job was to make sure that Kevin didn't have any blue moon or ice cream or little snacks and treats that weren't going to help him prepare for this race. And William took his job very seriously. He's like that little guy in Rocky. What's that, what's that guy's name? Mikey? Mi Mickey? Mickey. <laughs> Mickey. That's William. I tell you, because you had the talent to become a good fighter. And instead of that, you became a leg breaker to some cheap second-rate loan shark. To live in? It's a waste of life. William and Kevin even came up with this little chant. We put it on the back of one of his little faces that we made. Stronger than Rocky, faster than Bud, you can do the study because you're a big stud if you are so humble to say so yourself. <laughs> Anytime Kevin was tempted to have a blue moon, I would say, no way, Daddy. You're not having blue moon until you finish this race. Now, why was I trying not to drink beer or have ice cream? Because then it would be... <laughs> then it would have been harder. What's so funny? Because you're drinking beer right now. Was I, did I stay true to that? Only you did, except for one time. What did I eat? Ice cream. A big bowl of ice cream. How do you know? Because I saw it with my two eyes, the way I heal. And I can remember that moment. No one's going to forgive you for that. And I ran to my room, and Daddy came in after we finished his ice cream. And then he said, sorry, bud. And then I didn't want to talk to him because he was rude, very rude. That's the same guy who's standing right in front of me. I was not as good of an influence on Kevin because he's doing endless hours of work and like the training's one thing, but also like being a parent, it's stressful. And you know what probably would be super great at the end of a long workout or day? blue moon. Kevin's training was crazy, but ultimately it was, it was all him. He had to deal with it all. And I think we found a pretty good balance. Um, it was, it was challenging at times for sure. I mean, there was times where I had to go from one event with the kids to Williams baseball game and well, it's about 14 miles away. How about if I run there while you drive the kids there and, and get them all ready? Did that one day. Um, luckily, Jimbo ran into me on the run, and I just hopped in his car to finish off that last mile or so. Are you going to the game? Yeah, you want to get in? Yeah. No. Okay, I'll take the vaccine. No, there's no Holy reason. Holy cow! I've run enough today. <laughs> Only 13 miles. Huh? Oh yeah. All right. All right, Jimbo. <laughs> I had to do so many long bike rides that one of them I did wearing headphones, listening to the Phil Jackson book, 11 Rings, and visiting 26 different OCFA fire stations along the way. Yeah, it was, there was always something. There was always something we had to kind of figure out and everything. The month of May was insane. And then the whole family got COVID. I will. <laughs> you know. Can you please get 
deeper. <laughs> you have to go higher. Hi. It doesn't go much deeper. And if it had gone much later than that, if Kevin had, if we had somehow kept it away from Kevin and then a week later he tested positive, I don't know if he would have been able to do this race. Yeah, it was a mild cold for a couple of days for me probably. Um, that was that was obviously the short term effects. Long term, I mean, who knows? Maybe it just zapped my energy and I had to had to walk a marathon during this race because of COVID. I mean, we don't know that having COVID didn't affect my race. We don't know that. True. True. You know, there's there's like long haul COVID effects. I haven't run a marathon since, so maybe that's one of them. It, I mean, it should be it should be studied at the very least. That's all I'm saying. We should have gotten you COVID earlier. Less marathons. You're gonna joke about a global pandemic now. That's the. That's where this is going. It's just it's tasteless. That's not what I want this video to turn into. So. All right, haircut. Getting to Des Moines was a lot harder than it should have been, because we had two flights essentially, one connecting flight to into Denver, and boy, just that flight kept getting bumped back and bumped back and bumped back. And I'm looking over at Kevin and I can see his wheels turning and he's nervous. And it's very rare for Kevin to look nervous. We had maybe 10 minutes from the time we were supposed to land in Denver to the time our other flight was supposed to take off. We, we ended up having to run through the, the airport. And it is not close. We had to book it. Like I'm thinking about that scene in Home Alone where they're like, run, run, Rudolph, and they're just like running through this airport. That is the Hanson family on June 9th in the Denver airport. But we got to the gate and we were some of the, there were still three or four people boarding and they knew about us coming on the, on the flight and they had held a road for us in the back. Bravo, Southwest. They held the back row for us, okay? We landed way after they started boarding. And many nice people let us through. We got on the plane. We waited for a very long time to get our bags and then to get our, uh, we had to get our car. And I think we were just like feeding the kids gummy worms and like whatever treats we had left um, to keep them entertained and in a positive mood. But I actually have really fond memories of that. Just knowing that we arrived and we were there and we were ready for Kevin's race. And we probably didn't get to the hotel until close to one. We're starting to get everything ready for the kids. And Aaron goes into like the main bedroom area and sees this surprise on the mirror and says, Kevin, you got to get in here. You got to see this. And I don't know how he did this, but Johnny. Yep, there's your face, your stupid face. <laughs> and yeah. And this was just in the other room and you didn't know it. No, yet. Then, what does he say? Got the hotel staff to print out a Photoshop picture he had made where it's me surrounded by a bunch of Muppets. Oh, yeah. oh, God, this body. How did they do that? I don't know. Ooh. This, this is a Johnny thing. Did you know about this? I had no idea. I think this is Tim Robinson. The uh, is that the joke? Is that the joke? Yeah, is that the joke? Is that the joke? <laughs> is this the joke? It's me as Jim Henson. And Ernie's holding a blue moon. Oh my God. Well done, Johnny. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. Finding out what hotel you guys were staying at without having any information. Finally, Jimbo came through and told me where you guys were staying. So I called the hotel. So I called the hotel. I asked to talk to the manager. And I said, hey, I have a weird, uh, very weird, but very doable thing you can do, hopefully. I guess mission accomplished. Johnny has a way about him. He's got a charm that will get people to do things that you never would have done, or you wouldn't think you would do, and all of a sudden you're in the middle of doing it. So Friday morning in Des Moines, me and the family go to Iron Man Village, pick up my bib, we pick up uh, all, all the gear that I need. We go into the Iron Man store and buy nearly a thousand dollars worth of swag. Yeah. Hi, it's uh, official. I'm wearing a very small portion of it right now. Mm. Still recovering from it financially. <laughs> oh, we're good. Thank you, though. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Lizzie, smile. <laughs> I got my list. Mm -hmm. Everything needs to go in every bag. There are five Long bags. List. 
bike gear bag, run gear bag, special needs on the bike. Kev? That's all the hydration stuff. Oh. This is all the clip bars, <laughs> and this is all the gels. Oh my I'm goodness. gonna eat them all, hon. So then uh, my parents showed up later that night. We all had a little happy hour in the hotel lobby. And the day before it was a Saturday, right? So we, uh, you and I took, we got over to the, where the bikes are. You could get your bike. You walked it over, dropped off your bag. So here it is uh, just before noon on Saturday. Kevin's gonna drop off his stuff. Bike gear, run gear, pick up my bike. Jimbo, how many people other than me are you following in the Ironman Tracker app at this point? Uh, this guy, Jake, uh, somebody from... Uh, the airport? No, he's from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he didn't live in the airport, but you ran into him at the airport? No, at the hotel. Okay. And Troopa's kids, Troopa's family, they all arrive. Get out of the car! Get out of the car! Yay! Quinny, Quinny, Quinny! What are you still doing in the car? Let's get you out so you can give hugs to cousins! Hi, Addy! Hi, Addy. Guys. What's up, James? Good to see you, bud. Hi, Queenie! Good morning! Wait, is it morning? What's up, buddy? Kids are all excited. They're hugging, they're squealing and everything. Just having a run of the hotel. And uh, we all go to the pool. While we're at the pool, James and I are kind of going over uh, expected times during the race. And we were just doing math together. Like We were like, okay, if you finish with this, and then we were like literally figuring it out. By the math we were doing, it's going to be about, I'll be about eight and a half hours into the race by the time I start the run, which would give me another eight and a half hours to finish the run. We have a 17 hour cutoff, no ifs, ands, or buts. Okay, eight and a half hours to finish a run. I could walk that thing. What was your favorite part about it? I, um, I, um, it was um, thanks to go to the pool. Oh, you went to the pool? That's cool. And it was how I learned how to swim, but not really swim. Like, just like, I learned how to swim with my 40s on. You, you were trying to go over logistics at dinner. Oh, I had maps, of course, because we're trying to figure out where we should see you as you get out of the the water or i'm thinking like. we don't try to see him coming out of the water that's that's probably a bad idea like well we can't get there it's too early to get there we're coming out of the water and i was like we came all this way to support him during the iron man why wouldn't we be there at least for the first leg of this that makes no sense so i said i'm i'm going i don't know about the rest of you but i'm going there we go and see him about mile 18. And that's about a 30 minute drive out of town. Good Lord, okay. 30 minutes here. We had various maps and we had the course map, we had maps on our iPad or phone or whatever. And uh, just regular maps. So we're trying to figure out how to get from A to B and make sure the timing was right and stuff. If we're looking at the run here, pay attention. I'm, I'm looking, I'm paying attention. I got stuff to do. It was an early morning to start the race. I got up at 2.30 and I got on the bus to get to the, the start. Uh, God, that was a, close to four. Everything about the morning was totally went like clockwork. It was a piece of cake and got the uh, wetsuit on. And just got in the water probably around 6, yeah, I think it was 6.08 because I had until 11.08 to finish the race. Well, Mommy woke us up like really, like, earlier than we ever wake up. We just decided not to bring the kids most of the places because it was a lot of driving and our kids like to get car sick. So we mostly just went without them. I mean, what's the plan? What, what, who's going where? And Well, we all plan on going to watch you get out of the water. We weren't going to go watch you swim basically but want to be there before we got out so we found out where to park i mean we walked like a mile and a half to to like go to where your swimming thing was to like say hi we could track you because we had the, the iron man tracker thing we knew where you were in the water theoretically i think kevin has just crossed the peninsula and he's 
Probably about to turn left on the buoys over here. The swim went fine. The swim was the easiest part of the day because it was it was cool and you're in the lake and you know you do two laps in this lake. Mommy made us dress up in the short. You know, it wasn't easy to see you coming out of the water because you're in a black, you know, wetsuit like everyone else in their dog. <laughs> But I, I remember specifically watching because I can usually tell when it's you just by the way you run or whatever because of their gait. So you describe my gait. You, I don't know. It's boo. <laughs> no. So I was closest to where you got out of the water with my camera going. I never saw you get out of the water. I caught it. Somebody else didn't, but I saw it. I had the video camera just ready, just ready to go and. Saw you come out. Oh, yeah. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! I was yeah. amazed we even got to see him because it was kind of like this mob of people. And we see some kid like stripping off Kevin's wetsuit. Once he finally gets out of the water, he runs by, has this huge smile on his face. And the kids were just so excited. We were like thrilled that this day had finally come. And you just you just waved hi to me? No. What did you do? I gave you a hug. Can you do that with your eyes open? No, I gave you a hug. Why did you give me a hug? Because you weren't sweaty yet. Just regular water? Yeah. And Buddy gave me a hug too, right? No. He didn't want to get wet. Wait, you have to run how far not wearing any shoes? Like, this can't be a good thing. It's the very start of the race. And we decide, you know what, we're going to go out to hopefully maybe 30-ish. We were going to try and catch Kevin. And we figure there's plenty of time, like so much time. He's riding a bike and we're driving cars. Was mommy having an easy time getting... No. Describe that, please. I don't know what your full question was. <laughs> You're such a crap. And we take off, and I think it's Joni and Jimbo first, then Rob and Marcy, and then myself kind of pulling up the rear. And I'm telling you from the start, <laughs> these people are off, like, fast <laughs> on these roads. But in general, navigating Iowa was quite interesting, especially with, with Joni at the wheel. Um, and we were not sure, roads were not well marked, and we had no clue where we needed to find Kevin on the bike, and we were out in the middle of absolutely nowhere. So it was quite an adventure. So you were the one driving, you think? I think I was. Are you... I'm pretty sure. Are you obeying, obeying the laws of the road? Yeah, of course. Don't I always? You're not running stoplights? Well, <laughs> stop signs. You know, uh, she definitely blew through a stop sign. And I said, Joni, you could have gotten us killed. And she said, well, I just didn't know how to stop on the dirt. And I said, well, that's really just not a good, not a good excuse. You're not Maybe. running stoplights? No. With people trying to follow you? Oh, I might have done. <laughs> Multiple Maybe. times. No. I think I was driving, right? Did I did I lose people? I, I don't remember. I, I really don't. I'll I don't... tell you, they remember. <laughs> and, and it's cottonwood. Right, sir. Good course. It's not even a road. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. We lost Rob, but Aaron's still behind us. One mile. Running through yellow lights when there's two more cars behind you. I'm like, I'm sorry. I am not risking the lives of my children. And They've been blaming Jimbo for quite a while. Plus, we'll have to ask Jimbo who drove. You talked about mommy was mad driving. She didn't know where she was going. And she lost track because grandpa ran a red light. She was saying bad words and she was like calling him. What words was she saying? Jimbo, we have to ask you something. This is part of the interview. Oh. Glasses off. I'm not dressed yet. Okay. So when we were driving all over Des Moines. Yes. All over Des Moines. Who was driving? Who was driving? Who was doing the driving? In between you. You were driving. It was me. I thought it was me. Because I'm the navigator. See? 
<laughs> if it's the other way around, it doesn't work. But apparently, I was running through <laughs> stoplights and stop signs, like losing people multiple times, and they were all That's blaming. What you do. And they... <laughs> okay, these people have to follow us. <laughs> Gone. What about? And people blame you for that. They blame you for driving. But I, I said I thought it was me. I was pretty sure it was me. She was pretty frustrated following Grandpa because he ran two red lights. That's what we know. He might have went three, maybe four. She was calling him a. And she was saying that he was a. Those words are meant for you, Joey. What's your reaction? Um, that sounds about right. Wow. We finally get to this location after having to like stop and ask some locals how to get to it. Finally get to this location. We get out. We're like, sweet. We're going to see Kevin coming up any minute now. Why is he getting farther away? Oh, man. We missed him by like minutes here. He's already passed us. <laughs> missed him by that much. I could track him, thankfully, because the Iron Man tracker was not accurate. It was definitely behind. We get back in the cars to see if we can get catch him at 56. Again, back dirt roads. We park one spot. We get out. We have no idea where it is. I know we could see bikers, but we didn't see like a you know halfway point. You know? So we gravelry road back, gravelry road down, cut across again. No. This is. There's bikers. Nice. And cars are going the other direction, but they're not coming the same direction as the. <laughs> were you asking any of the bikers what mile they were at? Oh, at various points. Yeah. <laughs> trying to figure out what mile we're at. <laughs> He's asking the bikers. <laughs> Jimbo's out there going. <laughs> and then the, the cyclists are like, what? Because he's saying, basically, were you already at the aid station or something? Something like that. Yeah, he's like shouting things at their shout. <laughs> were people answering you? No. <laughs> Backed up again, went down. One more road. Go, Here we go. Pop-ups and trucks and stuff. And now here's the halfway point. Hey, Jim, bro. We made it here. We made it. Oh, it's a little dicey. <laughs> so you went to mile 56, right? I Is forgot this... what was going to, I forgot what happened. You saw me at mile 56. I got off the bike. I talked to you guys. Yeah. So then you come up. We were all very relieved. We had our signs, as I recall. He was so excited to see us. You, you could tell he just needed that break. Yeah. How are you doing? Okay. Up for the half, huh, guys? <laughs> Gets off his bike. He's so happy, like so excited. Things are going well. After you see me in mile fifty-six, uh, describe how my what my attitude was like. Upbeat. <laughs> Say a full sentence, please. Yeah. <laughs> You're very positive, very upbeat. It's like, hey, I'm gonna get this done. You know, I put this much into it, I'm gonna finish it. You gotta do that again, Kev? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Very cool. It was around mile 56 that we had the, uh, right there, on your right. the gear bag for the bike where you have a bunch of stuff stashed in the bag Hi, that, you, that you kind you of packed earlier. Of I knew I was getting off there to replenish all the, the fuel, the hydration, all that stuff that I needed. And the family was there, and it was great. You know, Aaron and the kids, and Colleen and Rob and Marcy and Joey and Jimbo. And so, where are you? All right, let's do this again with the other water bottle. I'll put the other one in the point, guys. We're kind of doing this pit crew type thing. They're like, "Well, how can we help?" And it, you know, hit me with sunscreen and and um, water and and just filling up all my stuff. That was great seeing them. That was it was nice to take that break. You know, I 56 miles nonstop basically, and boom, get a little break. All right, helmets on. Bacon's in the bag. Bye, Daddy. Sweaty hug. Oh, yeah. This is this is where the the real tough part on the bike comes in. Then we might have gone to lunch. 
And those those roads that I saw you riding on, slow long up hills, slow long down hills. And those slow long up hills are just brutal. And then we went to lunch with Addie and Patrick and Quinn. And it's starting to get a little windy and the sun's starting to come out. So it's getting a little hotter, it's getting a little harder. You know, it was really nice when we were like getting lunch and dinner and we were like in air conditioning. Yeah, we had really good lunch. <laughs> There's just not as much out there. There's just, you're just kind of in this, you know, open area. And I'm just trying to pass the time by like singing songs to myself. I'll do a thing where I'll sing 99 bottles of beer and I won't look at my watch until I get to the very end. I had a beer at lunch, a couple beers I think at lunch. Had a beer. It was beer and stuff. I liked going to get lunch and beers in the middle of it. That was fun. <laughs> Drinking beers and oh yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, we were lucky. Kevin's out there on the road. We we're just snacking at this cute little um, bar that we went to that like had the best service. They were so great to us. It was fun. <laughs> great time. We felt really bad for you, of course. That's what I heard. I've heard from a couple people that lunch was the highlight. I mean, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say a highlight, but like it was much better than standing outside waiting for him. After this restaurant, we went to mile 100. It's one of those things, anytime, you know, you see your children doing something that is potentially dangerous, you want to see that come to an end. Okay, they're fine. Whew. Yes, I wanted to see you finished. And it's like, then I could put that to bed. Because if I saw you at mile 100, you still had 12 more miles. Anything could have happened then, too. But this woman had been telling us that the people she was spectating for, one of them had to drop out because of heat exhaustion. And this is the point where I started getting nervous, because we're hearing about how tough it is on the people running. What did you say? Run. What? <laughs> I'm stronger than Rocky. Faster than Bud. Woo! Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Oh. Yeah. You want to do douse in water? Yeah. Jake. <laughs> Not much. Douse him in water. Guys, I'll dump it. I'm gonna tell I'll you right now. I'll dump it on him. I'll dump it on him. I have been hitting every water station. You grab that. I have been hitting every water station and just. Dumping water on me. Yeah. I want you. I want you. No. I want you. <laughs> no, not right. <laughs> now. Right, so you break. Woo! Anyone any <laughs> and even though his tired, like he kept going, like he also was smart enough to keep hydrated in yes. at, yes. at 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 carefully timed breaks. So we see Kevin. He's super happy. We pour the water on him. He seemed pretty stoked about that. And he's just, he seemed really excited that he was about to finish this bike ride. It's the Breckenridge crew. See them at mile 100. And I got Addie singing a song to me. And we were waiting for a while because we didn't know when he was going to come up. Like, there's no way to like, track him. Um, and so while we were doing that, I wrote him like a poem song thing. Kevin Hansen is the best. Now he's put to the test. Cheer him on like a dog. He is no one else's love. He is swearing to not bother because he is the best father. Yeah. <laughs> no offense, Dad. He can run and bike and swim. He doesn't even need to win. Good job. Good job. Aaron brought this giant thing of water. He's like, hey, do you want me to pour some water on you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I want some water on me to pour some water. Oh, I felt so good, guys. Somebody's holding an umbrella up so that I can uh, just get in the shade and everything. I think James is holding my bike so it doesn't fall over. I started this race at 6.08 a.m. Yeah. I have to be done by 11.08 p.m. You're going to be fine. I'm probably going to use every single minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just walk <laughs> every. Oh. People who are getting heat stroke. I know. And, and out. I know. Well, walk it, it walk it slowly. It's fucking hot as heck. Like it's it's there's like probably five days of summer that are that bad. And um he takes off towards the end of his bike ride. <laughs> and Joni and Jimbo and Rob and Marcy are waiting for him there. Go go. Go. I got a marathon to walk now. There you go. Joni, Jimbo, Rob, and Marcy there, and, and Rob throws out one of his, all right, Kevin, which is exactly what Grandpa used to do, which was really cool to see. So that was cool, seeing you there, you know, that was, okay, he's got two things done, 
We're good. The, the, the joke was, I wasn't going to really walk. I was going to run. I was just going to walk more than I thought I was going to walk. I was very relieved that the bike thing was over, for sure. But it was also hot. But you looked good. You didn't, you weren't like dragging. You know what I mean? We, we, it wasn't like, oh my God, this is how, I don't know how this is going to, you know. You're walking pretty good, Kev, really. I've seen some people come off here, they're struggling. All right, you ready to go? Sure. We'll see you uh, at the run out. Uh, the walk out. Okay. And then as I recall, you, you went to this giant tent and you talked later about how it was just so hot and humid in there. And It's easily 30 degrees hotter in there. It is like a swamp. It is just muggy and disgusting. And there's this cloud of like spray sunscreen in the air. And it's just like, oh God, oh, this is, this is not where I want to be. I just get out of here as quick as you can. I had felt fine on the bike coming out of that tent. It was like, dude, I need to cool off. Here we are at the run out. Do this. A lot of walking. It's okay. Uh, here at the walk right. out. What time you guys got right now? Four o'clock. A few minutes before. Seven hours and eight minutes to finish. It's okay. I know you do. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, hey. How you doing? Looks good. You got a marathon to walk, actually. Do your thing, baboom, huh? It was so hot. It was so hot. I wasn't feeling well by that time. <laughs> it's really hot. Oh, hey. it's, it's been hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really hot. And, you know, at that point, we were all kind of doing the math going, yeah, he's only, he's got plenty of time still. He cut off his 17 hours. Lacey's crying. He's to here. What's up? Okay. 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 What happened, kiddo? What happened? Mama. Mama. Are you missing Mama? Yeah, you might have got look at that pup there. Okay, okay, look, look, look at, look at, Grandpa, Papa, you got Papa. Hey, mommy, mommy went to get her toenails done. It's good, Kevin. It's good, Kevin. It's good, Don't bump her head. Don't bump her head. Don't bump her head. I got to the first aid station. I'm thinking, okay, put some ice under the hat and dump myself with water and, and, you know, get some Coke or something. And there's a lady yelling at the aid station who's just yelling, we're out of ice and the water's warm. And I'm like... Oh my God, that was easily the lowest point of the race for me. Around mile two, I, the next aid station had ice. And luckily every aid station after that had ice and cool water and everything. So we were fine. But that, that second aid station had ice, it had water, it had Coke. And I refilled and I just cooled myself off. And I hit mile two and I was at about 28 minutes. So about half an hour, two miles, half an hour. Oh, that's essentially four miles an hour. Well, four miles an hour, and I have seven hours to do this. That's 28 miles I could cover in, in the seven hours, but I only have to do 26.2. So as long as I can keep this pace of 15 minute miles, I should be okay. I'll finish on time, right? That math is working out. And the fact was, it wasn't just too hot for me. There were people dropping out of this race all over the place. There were people pulling off to the side and throwing up. So this is like six or seven at night and six or seven at night was the hottest part of the day, which is insane that the hottest part of the day was actually in the evening there's people getting pulled away in ambulances they're they're falling over medics are helping them they're getting ivs put in and they're done they're done for the day i'm looking and it's like all right the heat index is like 105 or 110 that meant the pavement was like 110 115 degrees whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, he just looks so hot i'm sure he's so hot Nice job, guys. They close marathons at much lower temperatures than this. They just say, stop, it's over. But, you know, people have already committed so much in this Ironman at this point. Mile six, I see Aaron, James, Colleen, and all the kids. And I'm asking James, like, hey, well, you got to figure out uh, what's the pace I need to do for the next, you know, for 20 miles. And, and he's like, no, let's just find out. You got six or you got 20 more miles to go. 20 miles until 11 p.m. is this much time. You can do basically like 16 minute pace, 16 plus or something like that. And I was like, OK, that's what I thought. We're good. I'm going to keep going for the 15 just to give myself that extra buffer. And I saw Aaron and I said, I'm going to need some real food at some point because I'm going to be walking this thing and I just got a long way to go. And now I'm not worried about like, oh, is it going to be too heavy while you're running to eat some, you know, a burger or something? I was like, I don't, I don't care. I'm walking and I need real food in my body. 
And someone pointed out this brewery, which we had our eye on to have dinner at. They had a steak wrap. And so I went in and ordered it. We're hustling because Kevin has this loop. He's about to come back. Oh yeah, it'll be up anytime, anytime. We'll let you know. I'm like, <laughs> I don't believe that. I'm standing outside to keep an eye out for Kevin. Joni's inside kind of like making sure they know she's there waiting for this food to arrive. So then I finally was just like, that steak wrap? Are we getting close? Oh yeah, oh sorry. And it comes out and Kevin literally turns this corner and we have a steak wrap. It was, yeah, it was pretty, you know. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Got a couple of little running stints in there. Okay. I was in a polo shirt, shorts, and like, was getting excited to try a whole bunch of beers and do beer flights. Like, well, Kevin did his thing. I'm an Iron Man. Oh, and I, I'm a drinking man. Uh, and so anyway, uh, but it was pretty clear that Kevin like, was struggling and I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to go do this. Go, go. You want company? And so when he comes around, I'm like, hey man, do you want to walk in, buddy? Like, I'll, I'll go with you for a while. And I was like, oh, sure, whatever. I mean, I got nothing else going on. I'm just wandering these streets for the next, you know, eight miles till I see you guys again. We'll walk up the hill with you. We'll walk up the hill. Uh, we're ready to help. We're ready to walk. We'll run, tw we'll go 20 with you if you need it. Well, I'm wearing my running clothes. So then I start walking with him and we're walking pretty fast. We're like at, I think a 13, 14 minute pace, sometimes 16, whatever. And it's like, Hey man, you want me to keep going with you? And it's like, yeah, let's keep going. Like, so I keep going, not knowing, I figure I can just kind of duck out and go back and might find you guys. But then I realized like, Oh, I'm now we're two miles away from everyone else. And that it doesn't turn around for eight more miles. Like we're not getting back for eight more miles. But it was fun, like we're talking and we're looking at pace. And like in the beginning, we started actually running a little bit. We would do like jog for a little bit. Like, and it, he was like, dude, let's stop. Like, we're not running, we're not jogging. Like, he's like, we, I'm not here for that. Yeah. I'm here to walk. Yeah. I am completely fine with, with where I will be on this race. I am totally like, oh, I'm just gonna, as long as I just keep walking, I'll be fine. Like, this is all good. And so I'm just in a happy mood. I just gotta get through it. And throughout the entire run of the race, I'm putting ice in my hat. And every time I got to the next aid station, the ice I had put in was essentially gone. And I just filled all the way back up. I'm also walking through whatever water they're giving you, whatever water is flowing from a hydrant or from some pipes or hoses or whatever. I'm putting water on my, on my head the entire race. And lo and behold, of course, that's going to lead to blisters eventually. You okay? You want to keep walking? I will. How many more miles do you got? Eight. You're finishing, oh. you're finishing this thing. I know. You got it. Good for you. Kevin's encouraging everyone. Everyone he sees like, God, you're fine. Because people were super discouraged along the course. They're like, I'm not going to finish. It's not going to happen. Like, you could tell. There was just this, this, like, it's over. It's not going to happen. We're getting that medal. Right? Yeah. We're doing it. He is doing math for a lot more people on the course who are in the same boat I am, who are just not sure. The, uh, yeah, 15, 15 and a half minute pace. You, you're, you're across the finish line with time to spare. All right, Kev. I said I ran the whole time. You did run the whole time. We'll just turn the audio. We'll put music over this. <laughs> and they're right. Well, Kev, it's been fun running with you, walking with you. Yeah, thank you, James. About seven and a half miles together. Helpful. You want to get in that metal. You want to jog deck style? Nope. It's downhill. I know, my feet are kind of like on fire. Right okay. Now. We get this call from James. And James is babbling something about shoes. Around mile 16, as my feet are starting to just get blisters everywhere, and I, I acknowledge the fact that I need to switch into something dry. Who's got the closest shoe size to me? Who's got dry feet? Jimbo? My dad? Can I get your shoes? All right. So at that point, all right. So I take my shoes off and my socks off, and I'm walking around barefooted, letting my because I've been in my shoes all day. Let them air out a little bit. How you doing, Kev? You ready? Ready for a foot break? Yeah. Here come the kids. They're just gonna tackle you, that's all. One of the things I like, because I had done dance marathon a couple of times, like all well, four years, but I was like, hey, Kevin, when we meet up with people at the brewery, the thing you need to do, and this is gonna be weird, but you get there and you put your feet in the air. Like sit on, lie on the ground and put your feet straight up because the one thing you need this time to do is get as much blood out of your feet back into your body. Okay, here we go. 
And I'm like, I am the only person who's gonna, who's gonna do this. Like it's, this is my moment. Here I go. I take off his shoes. He's got these like slimy, wet, humid socks that are just nasty. <laughs> I'm just pulling them off. So I got more band-aids in my backpack. If it looks like, oh, there's a blister here or something. When you first let you dry it up, right? Are you saying that there's a blister? Just <laughs> thinking to myself, like, I love this man so much and I am proving it right now. Because <laughs> my feet look disgusting and they're all wet and they're all pruny. I mean, you think they get bad in a bathtub after like an hour or so. This is four hours of just wet feet. Me and Addy thought it was disgusting. So we like kind of walked around the corner really fast. I asked Erin to put band-aids on any part she saw that looked like blisters and she she says to me with a straight face like hun i don't know what's going on in your feet i can't i can't tell what this what this this is they're like white they're all white and they're Oops. all pruny trying to dry between his gigantic toes yeah. i don't know where to put them i got them now i'm touching both socks everybody <laughs> that's what i'm doing right now. Jimbo for you. Hey, beggars can't be choosers yeah. Jimbo, I'm going to need your underwear, like, too. Yeah, I, I didn't know I needed to wear my good underwear today. When we needed something to dry out, I'm like, I literally... James was showing us his blister from walking with you. <laughs> Nobody was wearing proper gear by this point. Thank you so much, guys. Right. Easy 10. You do that in your sleep. Kevin. That's right. Okay, go. You go. Yeah, go. Go, 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 go. Hey. There we go. Colleen walks with me for the next couple miles. And while my feet never got worse, they definitely didn't get better. But those shoes saved the race for sure. Uh, tell me about your time with Kevin from miles 16 to 18. Um, well, it was real hot, but I really couldn't complain about that to him. But we would walk far apart because we weren't really sure if it was like legal for him to like have someone walking with him. So I would be like on the sidewalk and he'd be on the street. Try to give him that oomph without, you know, getting him disqualified. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get that medal! saw me in mile 18, you ran over to me and you hugged me. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah you ran up to me and hugged me. And I was super sweaty. I thought, I thought you were dying. dying. Why did you think I was dying? I had no idea why you came up to me and decided to come and hug me. I didn't seek you out. I didn't come up to you. Yeah, I have no idea why I died at all. You have no idea where we I have were. no idea. You have no idea why you No came idea. Up did you think I was super sweaty and gross? That doesn't sound like something I would do. But you did it, right? Yeah. You must love your dad so much. Uh, yes! Rob walks with me for a little bit coming out of mile 18. It, it was very cool. He was, you know, telling me how proud he was of me. And he, he said something along the lines of, if, if grandpa was here, he'd be so happy to see you doing what you're doing and everything. And I told him how, what he did reminded me of what grandpa would do, you know, back when I played football or soccer or something. And it was just a nice, nice little moment that we had. Okay, did you, did you cheer on Uncle Kevin during his race? Um, I'm not sure, but I think I did a little bit. Yeah, at that point, yeah, we did go back to the hotel because I did get sandals. Had a little snack and went on a bed, which was a couch and was not comfy. Just to rest for a little bit and then went out. It was like 10 at night by this time. Kevin was still racing, but I was like exhausted. I went back to the hotel. James and the Troopers kids decided to, they had a long day. They decided to stay. A mommy was like, Okay, we have like a five minute break. 
and there was like a quarter of a SpongeBob episode. I remember thinking around mile 24, if I started running right now, I still feel like I might pass out from heat exhaustion. It was still that I'm still putting ice in my head. When I finished at 10.37 p.m., it was still 80 degrees. 80 degrees at 10.37 p.m. And so the finish line was actually not that far from the hotel. So we walked right to the finish line. And my big hope was that I'd see Kevin across this finish line. So there was some debate about different areas. And Joni and Jimbo decided to go to about mile 26, which I think ended up being great because Kevin definitely needed them for that last push. I was like, I want to see him before the finish line. I just want to make sure he's coming. If he, if he needs anything, I just want to be there. Just, you know. I got to give them my backpack and say hi to them and everything. I start running away from Jimbo. He wasn't expecting me to run. He's yelling at me to slow down so he could get a better video of me or so he could see me at the finish, I guess. I could barely hear what he was saying. I'm like, what are you, what are you talking to me? I'm running, bye. And I'm running and I'm trying to keep up with you. And I'm not running as fast as you because I have sandals on. And I was like, slow down. I'm not slowing down. I'm trying to- You're screaming it. Yeah. So I can kind of see him turn this corner and I start squealing at a high decibel level. And Journey, Don't Stop Believing came on. And we got there in time to hear them say your name as you as you went through there. But yeah, that was pretty cool. That was, that was, that was pretty amazing. It was just so sweet finishing, hearing Mike Riley call my name, call me an Iron Man. Kevin Hansen, you are excited. You are an Iron Man! And right as I got to the finish line, I go into this like, ah, yeah. that was, that was uh, animalistic. I, I don't know where that came from, but it came out because I had been on this freaking course for 16 hours and 27 minutes. It was bright, bright and, and you did, did weird, weird poses, poses in front of the cameras. cameras. Comes through and he does a little dance. And, ah, he's so excited. You're gonna get that little. It was just one of those things that like, it's all done, I'm done. And immediately I see that Aaron and the kids and Colleen are like right there at the finish line. She was just squealing so much. She was so excited. I was I was so excited. She was so excited. I kissed her on the lips, like Buddy says. Um, we hugged and I hugged the kids and I thanked them so much for all their support. And you and mommy kissed each other on the lips. And then mommy put the medal on you. It's gone, hon. And there's just that release at the end of like, it's over. I don't have to do this ever again. There's no question in my mind. Kevin Hansen, you are Iron Man! We did it! We did it! Jimbo, with the assist! <laughs> You were alive at the end. What's going on with you, man? I didn't want to burn out early, you know? It was just a say. really exciting time for our family. It was very cool to get to experience. And because we had all been a part of this, it had felt like it was this big family undertaking. And it was now done. Nine. Ah! The air is fresher, the colors are brighter, food tastes better, 
the birds are singing every day. I mean, it's it's up there. It's probably not as sweet as when I got married or engaged or had my kids, but I guess it would slide into the number five spot of best moments of my life. My favorite part about it was watching him and seeing how good he was and, and I'm very proud of him. At the end of the day, I'm very proud of you. What was your reaction when I finished the race? I was really proud of him. You. Him? Who am I talking to? <laughs> I was really proud of you. That's a huge deal. But I don't think it was smart to do it. When he finished, I was like so it's, it was really, really great, so. It's impressive that you did this, you know, and you're making a video about it. Your third video about Iron Man, I believe. And I just really think he did really good and deserves the title of Iron Man. I'm proud of you, Daddy. Thanks, buddy. Kevin, that was just remarkable, simply amazing. You get all the applause and respect. Um, and I've thought many times since then, I wish Grandpa was around for this because he would have been so, so proud of you. Were you following along throughout the day? Were you, were you using the Iron Man app? Were people texting you? I had no interest. Like, you know, I knew you were running and I wanted to make sure you finished. No interest in finding out where you were through the day or anything like that. Well, again, I'm just so proud of you. I, you know, no, seriously. Uh, you know, anybody can do it. Are you ever going to do an Iron Man? No. no. Why not? Why do you think? I don't know. All of the reasons! Give me, give me three reasons why you'll never do an Iron Man. All of them! This I can't even, just the thought of swimming, being all wet, and then getting on a bike and riding for way too long, and then, and then, and then running. No. No, absolutely not. Are you going to do an Iron Man? Maybe. That's a decision that I have to make when I'm your age. You know what? I'm sure Kevin will have some next big adventure. Uh, and a huge hat tip to Aaron for managing work, the kids, and everything else while you were doing your training. Um, it's, and it's important to remember what Mark Twain always said. Uh, behind every successful triathlete, there's a spouse who's saying, don't ever f do this again. I will say that, you know, very hard work running or doing an Ironman, but I will say that being a spectator at an Ironman, especially in 90 degree weather, is also a really hard job. And I told him, I mean, I was rooting for him to finish, but but selfishly, and I did tell him this, like, I, I want you to finish because you say you'll never do this again. And I am here to tell you, I will never spectate one of these again. So. You're welcome, Kevin. So glad you finished for all of us. True or false? You ran more in the Denver airport than you did in the entire race. Uh, that's probably true, but that's only because our gates were so far apart in the airport, and it's a really big airport. I ran the, I ran the finisher shoot. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this interview. This has been great. Even Kevin is sick of these interviews. Huh? 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 All right. Arcadia, sorry. Uh, Kevin texted me and said that uh, a little blurry on the last one. Could, could we redo this? No, absolutely oh, not. Come on. I have, I have better things to do. Sorry, bro. Don't you love your... Okay, <laughs> sorry. Do you remember anything else about the Iron Man race? Wow. Well, no. Okay. Uh, I think it's because he was proud of what he had accomplished. You must